Hello, my friends, how are ya? I am Dawn with Painted Willow Art, and I have got another paint along for you today. We're gonna do an owl today. I've had lots of you asking for an owl for a long, long time, so that's what we're gonna do today. Before we get started, I'm gonna show you what we need to have. Piece of watercolor paper. 140 pound watercolor paper is best, because we're gonna be putting water on it, and that way, that heavier paper will soak up the water and do what we want it to do. I'm using a piece of nine by 12 paper. That way it's big enough that you can see easily on video what I'm doing. You can use whatever size is convenient for you. You're gonna need a watercolor brush. I am using a size six brush today. You'll size your brush to what you're doing. Um, on a nine by 12, I could probably use um, a size eight or a size 10 or even a size 12. This is just what I have here. So this is what I'm gonna use watercolors of your choice. I'm using my, um, I don't even know, what set do I have? This is my Art Philosophy Tropical set because it's got a variety of colors in it. Use whatever watercolors you have. We're gonna need a pencil and an eraser to draw with. I've got a couple of waterproof black pens and a white Posca paint pen to use to do embellishments afterwards. Um, We'll talk more about embellishment tools when we get to that part of the video, but a black pen and a white pen are probably a good thing to have to at least start with. I do have my water and I've got a plate off to the side that I can use to either mix colors or if I don't wanna use my colors full strength out of my pan, I can pull them out of here and then wipe them, you know, wipe my brush on the plate, add some more water to it, <clears throat> excuse me, to kind of thin them down a little bit. So before we start the actual drawing, I'm going to take my paint set and I'm going to get my paints wet. That way they can start um, loosening up. These are, it's a pan set, so these are hard, which means paint doesn't come off on my fingers. Well, look at that. There's paint on my finger from something else. <laughs> it wasn't from this. <laughs> so the easiest way to do that is to take a spray bottle and just mist your colors. And that just lets them start softening up a little bit before you use them. And I'm just gonna set this aside while we're drawing. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I, I love to reuse things. So I had a bottle of detangler that when I finished, I just cleaned it out and now it has just plain water in it. So you don't have to go buy a special spray bottle. Use whatever you have for a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle at all, you can dip your brush in water and then let it drip into the pans. Or, and I don't have one handy right now because I'm gonna use, I did the spray bottle for the whole set. I do have these little pipettes that I like to use as well, and you can suck some water up in them and drip water in your pans that way. So however you get the water in there is perfectly fine. I just happen to use, have and use the spray bottle because I'm gonna use all those colors today. So I'm gonna set those aside for just a minute and I'm gonna zoom you in so we can do the drawing part of it. Now I am going to turn my paper a little bit sideways simply because this is a better drawing angle for me. It's hard for me to draw straight up and down and I don't know why that is. Even when I write, I turn my paper sideways and I have since I was in grade school. So I'm gonna turn my paper to give me a better drawing angle. If that works for you, great. If you prefer to draw straight up and down, you can do that as well. There's no there's no right or wrong. Just make it comfortable for you. I think a lot of times people forget that they can move their paper around and make it easy. Um, I do real quick wanna mention, I have my paper taped to a canvas board and that's to help prevent some of the warping that the paper's gonna do when we put water on it. I did not talk a whole lot about that process because I've got other videos on why we do that, but I do have new people coming in all the time. And, and if this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, um, I do tape my paper down. That way it helps prevent some of the warping. I am using painter's tape today. If you use something like masking tape or painter's tape, it can sometimes be a little too sticky and it can rip the paper when you pull it off. So it's always a good idea before you tape the paper down with those, pull off your strips and then like stick them to your shirt or the leg of your pants or something to get a little bit of fuzz on the back of them before you put it on the paper and that will help reduce paper tearing. Um, the other thing you can do is you can also hit it with a blow dryer and heat the tape up before you pull it off when you're done with your painting. So either of those work. All right, so we are going to start our owl. I'm gonna make mine 
pretty much full size on the page so it's easier for you guys to see. You'll resize yours depending on the paper that you're using. I'm gonna start towards the top of my paper and I'm gonna do the top of the owl's head and kind of work my way down the body. Now, we're not going for perfection on this. I am deliberately gonna have some wiggly wonky lines just because my style is whimsical and part of, part of that is wonky lines and things that are not perfect. So, to draw our owl, first thing we're gonna do, I'm also gonna draw mine fairly darkly so you guys can see on camera, but I would recommend when you do yours, you do it a little bit lighter um, just so that you don't have pencil lines showing through when we do the painting. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna make a real shallow kind of U shape. And this is gonna be the top of my owl's head. And then I'm gonna come down and make a V, but I'm gonna curve the lines as I do it. So there's my V shape. This is gonna be the top, you know, where an owl kind of looks like it's scowling a lot of the time. This is the part that's gonna make it look like it's scowling. I'm gonna add the beak by doing a little diamond right here. The top legs of my diamond are gonna be a little longer than the bottom legs. So these two are longer, these two are shorter. Okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is put an eyeball here. So I'm gonna come in, um, you know, I don't really have a measurement, maybe a little more than a thumb width if we need a measurement. And I'm gonna make a partial circle that's gonna come down and around and tie into my beak down in here. So something like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So rather than trying to measure, I'm just gonna kinda of run across. That's about the same point. and I'm gonna do the same thing. If they're not exactly even, that is completely okay. They don't have to be. And then from this point up top, I'm just gonna bring a little bit of a curved line down towards the eyeball, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So that kind of finishes off my owl's head. Okay. For the body, I'm gonna start about midway point on the eyes and I'm gonna make a big U, but it's not necessarily going to be perfect. So something along those lines. We need to add the wings on the side and I'm gonna do that in two steps. So I'm gonna come out just a little bit on this side and kind of mirror that line down the side and curve the line and bring it in. Then I'm gonna come back to this side of that body line, kind of mirror it and bring it down to meet that curve. And then with my eraser, I'm gonna erase that middle section. So what this ends up doing is looking like this is sitting on top of the body. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Oops, didn't start far enough out. I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here. And go back and erase that middle line. Now when you're erasing, try and be gentle with your paper. Don't scrub too hard on your paper because it can degrade the surface of your watercolor paper and that can make the paints um, sit uneven on your paper. So just be mindful of that if you're erasing. Don't erase too terribly hard. And if you're sketching lighter than I am, it should erase no problem without having to scrub real hard. Now we're gonna do one more on each side for the wings. So to do that, I'm gonna start kind of like at the bottom third of the body and bring that in like we did down here. Same thing over here. And then I'm gonna come back up top and come down and meet that part way. OK. 
Okay. So that's going to be, these are our wings folded over the body. In the body, I want to do some designs. So I'm going to make like feather types of designs here. The eyes look kind of weird. We're going to come back and add something to the eyes once we're done painting. So I'm not going to do anything else with the eyes for right now, but I do want to add some feather look in the middle. Now, keep in mind, we're doing this middle. We're going whimsical here. It doesn't have to be realistic looking. So while I am going to do a feather like design, you could do flowers, you could do stripes, you could do polka dots, you could do whatever you wanted in here to make this fun. Okay. So for my feather designs, I'm going to start like right here. And I'm just going to kind of make some feather shapes. And they're not real exact. And then I'm going to offset them as I move down. Just doing kind of the same thing. Offsetting with every row. They're a little bit rounded off on the bottom, but not exactly. But because they're offset, you get kind of that overlapping feather idea, right? And these down here at the bottom, I'm just going to make them go all the way down to the body. So they're not perfect, they're not even, but that's going to give us a little bit of a look of a feather on the body. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to give it feet, just because I don't want to. <laughs> so there's our owl, okay? We're going to start painting this and you can use whatever colors you would like to paint with. I think I'm going to do mine in probably blues and purples and I might throw a little bit of pink and maybe a little bit of tan in on the feathers. Okay, so I'm going to pull some of these over here. Hopefully we can get all these on here. Okay, so thinking about my colors, I think I'm going to do my eyes kind of a blue. I'm going to do the feathers, maybe a darker blue with a little bit of purple mixed in. And this top up here is probably going to be purplish. And then I'm going to use those same blues and purples in the feathers, but I'm also going to mix in some pink and tan here and there just so that we've got kind of some contrasting colors. So I think... Um, first I'm going to use this blue and like I said if you don't have the exact set I do that's perfectly fine if you do have this set the art philosophy tropical set you don't even have to use the same colors I'm using I'm going to use the hurricane blue to start with and I'm just taking my brush and kind of swirling it around in the pan and then I'm going to put it on my plate over here because I want to do this in kind of lighter colors. I don't want this one to be really um, bright and vibrant. If you do want that, absolutely do that with yours. You can paint straight out of your pan if you want to. I, for some reason, am feeling like this guy needs to be a little bit subtle and I don't know why. <laughs> so I've got my paint on my plate. I am going to wet the eyeballs a little bit first to start with. So I am just painting on some plain water. My water does have a little bit of a blue tint to it because I'm using the water I rinsed my brush in after I got that blue and that's okay because I'm going to paint this blue so having a little bit of that blue tint on there doesn't hurt anything at all. So I'm just painting some water on. All that's going to do is let my paint flow a little bit better. And it's going to keep that paint wet a little bit longer so that if I want to have some darker spots here and there, I can make darker spots by just throwing some more paint in. And because it's already wet, they'll kind of mix and mingle together real nicely. Okay, so I am painting in my blue to start with. And I decided I wanted this to kind of be lighter colors. So I'm just doing, whoops, I'm just doing a little bit of paint and I'm using my brush to kind of spread it around. And I'm not going to worry about whether you can see brush strokes or whether there ends up being little blooms here and there. Blooms are when one part dries faster than another part and you get those um, 
spots, they, they actually look like flower blooms. I'm not gonna worry about that because part of this whimsical style is that we don't want it to be perfect. Those little blooms and things like that give it character. Now you can see me wiping my paper here and there. I'm doing a really horrible job of staying in the lines today. So where I went out of the line over here with a little bit of the blue, it's still wet. I just took my finger and wiped it back towards what I was painting and it cleared off the blue. Now I do want to add just a little bit more blue kind of down at the bottom of the eye. Because I put water on this first, it's still wet. So I'm just taking a little more of my blue paint and adding it down in the corners. And what this is going to do is just give a little bit of a shadow. If your paint had already started to dry, you can get your brush wet and come back with just a little bit of water. I like to keep a paper towel next to my water so I can dab my brush a little bit if I need to because you don't want to get too much water. You don't want this to be soaking wet, but you can come back with a little bit of water on your brush and just kind of scrub over the edge of where you put the additional paint so that you don't end up with a hard line there. So that's going to give me just a little bit of a shadow at the bottom of that eye. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to let that dry for just a minute because I'm going to come to here and here and I don't want those colors to mingle together. I don't want my purples, uh, mixing into my eyeballs. And if this is still wet, wherever wet paint bumps up against wet paint, the two are going to merge together. So you can either set yours aside for a few minutes and let it dry, or you can hit it with a blow dryer. That's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pause this for a second and then I'll be right back. Um, and I'm going to go hit this with a blow dryer. Okay, my eyeballs are dry. So I'm gonna start up here with the top of the head. And the reason I'm gonna start there instead of on the wings is because we're gonna need to fill in this little spot too, but I'm gonna do it with a different color. So I wanna do this first, that way it can be drying while I paint down here. And once I get these done, then I can go back up and fill that in. So there's there's a little bit of a, a sequence to this that sometimes it's, <coughs> excuse me, helpful to think about while you're painting. Um, and move around your painting. You don't necessarily have to start like at the top and work your way to the bottom. Move around the painting so that different spots can be drying and then you can go back to them without causing any um, paint mingling issues. So I'm gonna grab some of my purple this time. So again, I'm just running my brush around in there. I am going to put it over here on my plate. So I'm just dabbing off my brush. Pick up some more paint. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be mingling some blues and purples. And I also want these to be a little bit watered down. I don't want it to be that full strength purple because it's awfully dark. And it doesn't fit the, the kind of lighter mood that I have going on here. Um, I am going to grab one of my other blues. And put some of that on my plate. And all I'm doing is just preparing my colors so that I've got them all here handy. That way when I'm painting, I can dip in and out of any of them. And I'm gonna grab some of that first blue that I used as well. So I've got a purple and two blues. Um, you don't have to use these exact colors if you're doing maybe reds and yellows. <clears throat> you can use whatever shades of reds, yellows, pinks you have. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my purple and kind of pull it out to the side here because I want this to be fairly light. The more water you add, the lighter the paint color will get because you're diluting it. So some of my more diluted purple, oops, I should have painted some water up here to begin with and I forgot. So I'm going to paint some water on here first. It does, it is tinted purple because I didn't wash my brush completely, but again, because I'm going to paint purple there, it's perfectly fine. But I want this to be wet to start with, kind of the same idea as we did with the eyeballs. So I've got some water painted on there. Now I'm gonna grab some of my purple and come in and start spreading my purple around.
And this is where you get to play with your paint and decide how dark or how vibrant you want that color to show up by how much paint you're actually putting on it. I'm not putting too terribly much paint because I want this to be, you know, kind of a little bit lighter, like I said at the beginning. <clears throat> I do want to give it some dimension though, so I'm going to go in with some more concentrated of the purple and I'm just going to dot it in at the top of each, I guess what would be considered the horns if this was a horned owl. And you may need to take your brush and kind of spread it out a little bit. Because we put the water on it first, it's going to kind of mix and mingle into the other paint. And I'm just taking my brush very, very lightly where the two, the darker and the lighter meet and spreading that around a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing with some blue right down here at the beak. So I'm dotting that on. And I don't know if, <laughs> if any of you panic when I do that. Um, it looks really vibrant and bright when you do that. Watercolors look uh, more vibrant when they're wet than when they're dry. So even though I put that big blob of blue on there and it's kind of shocking to begin with, I know it's going to dry lighter. And I'm also coming back, I rinsed my brush off and I'm coming back with just water on my brush and I'm just real lightly, not pressing real hard, real lightly kind of pulling that blue up into the purple so that those colors will mix and mingle. You can see they're kind of mixing together. Okay. Okay. I am gonna do essentially the same thing for my wings down here. So for my wings, I'm going to paint on <clears throat> just plain water. So I cleaned my brush off and I'm just coming back with plain water. When we paint on the water like this to help wet the paper in preparation for the paint, you're not going for sopping wet paper. You don't want it to be drippy wet. But when your paper is about the right degree of wetness. You can kind of see that shiny sheen on the paper. If I pick this up and move it around, that water's not gonna drip, but it just adds a little bit of a shiny sheen to the top of the paper. That's what we're looking for um, when we're doing a wet on wet technique, is just to get a little bit of water on that paper to help this paint kind of flow and spread when we put it on. This helps eliminate um, hard lines in certain areas if you don't want there to be a hard line and I don't in this case I want this purple to just kind of blend and flow over the whole surface if it does feel like it's starting to dry dip your brush in the water and come back with more water to get it wet again and I didn't get this bottom corner very wet <clears throat> so that bottom corner was kind of starting to dry a little bit Okay, so with the purple painted on there, I'm going to come back and down here at the very bottom, boy, I'm just messy today, y'all, and I'm going to put some darker purple right down here at the bottom on this inside section of the wing. Because this is wet, I have time to work it. You can see it's already starting to kind of flow into the purple next to it, but I don't want this hard line down here. So I rinsed my brush off and I'm coming back with just a damp brush. I tapped it on my paper towel just a little bit so it's damp, but it's not sopping wet. And then real lightly, I'm just going over where those two colors meet, kind of pulling the dark up a little bit, pulling the light down, just kind of smoothing that line between the two so that it blends together, okay? And on this outer wing, I'm gonna add some of the blue in the same way. I'm gonna do it on the outside. So I'm gonna drop my blue in here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna rinse my brush, dab it off a little bit so that it's just damp. And I'm gonna come back and kind of smooth this around a little bit so that those will mix and mingle a little bit better. If where this line right here is, if the two mix and mingle across that because both sides are wet, that's perfectly fine. 
We're just trying to add a little bit of color variation and interest to the wings. Okay? Now, hopefully you will notice when you're doing this, <clears throat> when you rinse your brush off and you come back and you start real lightly brushing across um, where the colors intersect, it may pick up a little bit of the color, and that's okay. Um, because your brush is not completely wet, it's just damp, it is sucking back some of the water from that paint. And in this particular case where I want this painting to be a little bit on the lighter side, that's perfectly fine. And it builds some depth and interest into those wings, okay? If you didn't want it to pick up the color, you may have to go back with a little bit of color afterwards again, or let it dry and go back in with a second layer. So I'm going to do the same thing on this other wing over here, painting in plain water. And I don't know if you can see my water over here on the side. I've got a kind of a three pot thing. I've got blue in this one, purple in this one, and this one is plain. Normally, <laughs> when you're painting water on, if you don't want to affect your colors, you're gonna use the plain water one to paint your water on. I've been dipping into the blue and purple. I don't know if you can see it off there on the side. I've been dipping into the blue and purple to do this because I'm gonna be painting blue and purple on this side. So it really doesn't matter in this particular case if this has a little bit of a blue or purple tint to it. So just like before, I'm gonna pick up some of that purple paint off my plate. Fill in both of those wings. And when I do this, I'm kind of visually comparing the two sides to try and keep them fairly close to the same um, value. That's how light or dark they are. Because this is wet, if I end up with too much dark up here, I can just use my brush to literally pull that paint down to the other end. And this is part of why watercolors can last you a really long time because it doesn't take a lot of paint. Okay, and then just like the first one, I'm gonna add some dark down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna kind of pull it up the side of this wing here. This is just gonna let us add a little bit of dimension. And if it's not blending in as much as you would like it to, rinse your brush off, dab it on the paper towel so that it's just damp, not wet, wet. And come back very lightly and pull those colors together. Okay. And then we're gonna do the same thing again with the blue. I'm gonna add some blue down the outside here and across the bottom here. And same thing, rinse your brush off, come back with just a damp brush, dab it on the paper towel, and just real lightly run it over the edge where those colors meet. And you're just kind of gently pulling the colors together. If we had started with dry paper, this would be a little bit more difficult to do. The paper's still gonna get wet when we put the paint on it, but by wetting the paper first, you're prepping it for this exact process. And that way it's got a little bit more water on it, which helps the blending a little bit easier. So there we go. Now, this should be reasonably dry. So I'm gonna come back up and fill these in up here. I want those to be darker, so there's a little bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna use my purple, but I'm gonna use it more full strength. And I'm just gonna fill in that little spot right there at the top. If yours is not quite dry before you do this, you might wanna dry it first because we don't want the two to bleed together. Now, for the second one, I'm gonna flip mine upside down because this is wet and I should have done the other side first. I'm notorious for dragging my hand through wet paint. So to avoid that, I'm just gonna flip this around the other side 
That way I can do this one without having my hand sitting near wet paint. I have ruined more than one painting <laughs> by dragging my hand through wet paint. So I'm just using my purple almost full strength to make that a little bit darker up there. So that gives that dimension. It, it, it looks like that ear shape and it makes it look like the head is more 3D. Okay. I also want to do my beak. I'm going to do that a yellow color. So I'm going to use this yellow and in my set it's called pineapple. It is a fairly vibrant yellow and I don't want it to be too bright because the rest of this is fairly muted. So I'm going to put it on my plate and add a little bit of water to it. So I'm watering it down. This should be dry in here because we dried the eyeballs. So I am just going to paint in and see, look, I just did it. Ah, paint in my yellow on the beak. Look at right here. See that right there? I just stuck my hand in that. So, or I made a handprint there. Because this is whimsical, you could leave it like that. We're gonna add embellishments on top. You may never know it. If it's still a little bit wet, make sure you rinse your brush first. So I just threw some yellow in there now. Um, come back with a, a damp brush and just run your brush back over it. You might need to add a little bit of paint back into it. But if that is still wet, by adding a little bit of paint, running back over it with your brush, you can fix something like that. Watercolor is a little bit forgiving in situations like that. Okay, so where we are now, we need to dry this because we're gonna do the inside, but I don't want anything blending and running into the wings. So set yours aside, let it dry, or go hit it with the blow dryer. I'm gonna pause us and go let mine blow dry. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I'm back, mine's dry. We're gonna fill in the feather section now, and I'm gonna do this kind of a, a variegated, I'm gonna turn it sideways a little bit. I'm gonna do it kind of variegated with the blues and the purples that I've been using. I'm also gonna add a little bit of pink, and I'm gonna use, um, I think some of that yellow. I kinda of like that yellow. So, again, just to prep my plate a little bit to make sure I've got what I want there handy, I'm gonna get some more of that blue I think I just put my blue in the wrong pile. <laughs> oh well, that's okay. These two blues are close enough, it's probably not going to matter a great deal. So I've got me some blue, grab me a little bit more purple. And that purple's dark. I like it. I'm going to grab some more of this yellow. And then I'm also gonna grab some pink. So then I can set my paints off to the side and I'm gonna paint off of my plate. Now when I do this, I'm going to just kind of randomly alternate my colors. I just want to try and be careful I don't end up with the same color next to each other. And because my intention is that each of these be a different color, you've got something you need to decide here on yours. If I just start painting and I do this one and then I do this one and then I do this one and I do this one and I do this one, these two are still going to be wet when I'm doing these, two down, these three down here. So the colors could merge together. If you're okay with that, there's nothing wrong with that. And that is probably what I'm going to do. If you would rather your colors be very defined and each feather very separate, dry them in between or move around. Paint one up here and then paint one down here and then paint one over here so that you're letting these dry before you come back to paint another one right next to it. Okay. For today, I'm going to kind of let them merge together and see what we get. I don't know what it's going to look like. It's an experiment. So I'm just gonna randomly paint these on. I am gonna water my colors down on my plate a little bit by dipping my brush in the water and adding some water to it so that I keep this kind of pastel-y look. And I did not paint water on the feathers first. A, because they're smaller areas. B, I do want them to dry 
quicker if we can. Because I'm going to be adding other colors right close to them. I'm not worrying too terribly much about whether I'm getting blooms or if one side is darker than the other. This whole middle section, we're going we're gonna to be adding some embellishments on this anyway. So this whole middle section is just kind of a playground at this point. If you do put a color on and it feels kind of dark for what you've got around it, rinse your brush off, dab it off on your paper towel a little bit, and come back with just a damp brush and drag the existing paint that you have there around. Don't put any more paint on it. Just drag that existing paint around. So that strip of purple that I put on there felt a little bit dark. So I just rinsed my brush off to get the extra purple off and I came back with that damp brush and just move it around. Okay, now you can see this is starting to kind of bleed into that feather. The purple's bleeding in there a little bit. I am completely okay with that. If you don't prefer that, dry these individually before you paint next to them or like I said, move around so that they get a little bit of a chance to dry before you go right back next to them again. So I'm just randomly moving around here. I'm probably going to speed this section up because you get the idea and finish this whole thing off. So go ahead and finish filling yours in the same way. All right, so I've got mine painted in. Um, I did let mine dry, so if yours is not dry, pause the video for a minute, set it aside, let it dry, or go hit it with a blow dryer because we do need it to be dry for the next part. Um, I do want to show you on mine that some of these colors bled together. Um, I'm completely okay with that. I also did have one spot where I didn't get the blue rinsed out of my brush real good, so when I dipped it in the yellow, I kind of got a green, but that's okay. It gives it a little bit of a, a different color in the mix, but because it's colors that I've already used, it was this blue and this yellow, because it's colors that I've already used, that green coordinates with the rest of it. So it doesn't throw it off, it doesn't look weird. Okay. Also notice I'm a little bit messy up here. I do these paintings a little bit faster than I would if I'm, you know, sitting and doing a painting that I'm going to use for a greeting card or something, because I don't want these videos to take 8,000 years for you all to do. So it is a little messy, but because of the way I'm going to embellish this and finish this, that's completely okay. And I'll show you how we're going to cover up those things here in just a second. Um, I do want to mention something here real quick, because this is, this is a point a lot of people and myself included, you get to this point in painting and you go, Ugh, what am I doing? <laughs> this is the ugly phase. There's this point in every painting, drawing, whatever it is you're creating, that it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look maybe good to your eye. It looks like it's not going to come together. You start to question what you're doing. It's okay. Trust me. <laughs> it's going to be okay. It will surprise you when we're done. So you kind of have to push through that, that ugly phase of the painting. Um, continue with your plan. It, it will all work out in the end, I promise. So we're going to do some embellishing on this, and what I'm going to do is use a black pen and a white pen. I keep it simple to just these two when I'm doing these paintings for you, but if you have other, particularly other paint pens like this, those work really well on top of watercolor, you're welcome to use whatever other colors you want to. Feel free to, you know, to go wild and add other colors. The white pen that I'm using is a Posca pen. This is actually an acrylic paint pen, but I love it because it gives me a nice opaque white a lot of times the white um, gel pens and things like that, they dry up real fast or they don't give you a nice opaque white that really stands out. So I love the Posca paint pens for that. And I'm using a black pen that's waterproof. 
It doesn't necessarily need to be waterproof because I'm going on top of what I've already painted, but if I decide I want to go back and add some paint on later, if I've used a waterproof pen, I can do that and it won't smear the pen. This particular one is a Uniball Deluxe Micro. All of these supplies are listed in the description of the video, so if you want to go back to find out what I use later, you can. But I love these waterproof pens, even if I'm doing it after I've painted. So if I do change my mind and decide I want to add some paint on, I can do that without the pens smearing okay so for the initial outline that I'm going to do on this I'm going to do kind of two different things I'm going to do the eyeballs and the beak fairly close to the line I'm going to kind of follow that line I'm also going to do that close to the line on the feathers so let's do those first remember you can move your paper to make it easier for you and I'm just following the contour of my paint. And you will probably see me turn this around a lot so that I'm at a good drawing angle for myself. Now adding these lines in is where we're able to cover up some of those spots, like over here where that bled in. And because this is a whimsical style, even if you don't cover up like all those spots like that, it's okay. The whole idea of whimsical is that it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, so there's my outline for those. I'm going to do the same thing down here with the feathers. The other thing adding outlines like this in does is if you have spots where you can see your pencil drawing through the paint, um, this is part of why I suggested when you draw yours, you draw it lighter than I did. Once you paint over the top of watercolor, you cannot erase it out from underneath. So if your lines are light to start with and you end up outside of your initial sketch somehow which happens especially if we're if we're taking perfection out of the mix doing an outline like this can cover up some of those pencil lines so that you can't see them through your drawing okay so we got a fairly strict outline here, here, and on the feathers. For the rest of this, I'm gonna do kind of a wiggly line. So I'm gonna turn this and I'm gonna zoom us in for a sec so that hopefully we can see here. Bear with me just a second, my camera's. Getting a little wonky on me. Okay, that should work. Sorry, I am I am not a video pro. This is me and my cell phone doing these videos. These aren't these aren't highly produced cinematic things. <laughs> okay. So, for the rest of these outlines, I'm going to do kind of scribbly lines here and there. So, I'm just going to do it real kind of sketchy. And I'm going to make some zigzags and some squiggles here and there. Because I want the outside of this to look a little bit fuzzy. Because owls are kind of fuzzy, right? So hopefully you can see what I did there. I made it all zigzaggy threw in some loop-de-loops here and there. And I'm gonna do that same thing up around here. And then I'm also gonna do that on both of the wings. Okay, so I'll probably speed this part up. You guys can do the same thing on yours. Do those zigzaggy, jaggedy, sketchy type of outline.
Okay. I did not do anything on these two middle sections just yet. I'm going to go back and add some sketchy marks with my pen to kind of feather those out a little bit. So I'm going to just kind of add some sketchy marks going out either side. And I'm going to do that on both sides of this. I'm not doing anything real exact. Just kind of sketchy with my pen. And that's going to give us kind of that illusion of feathers there. Oops, and I forgot to I forgot to do my bottom line here, so let me do that real quick. All right. So that's given us kind of a fuzzy looking owl, right? We do need to fix the eyeballs because right now it's given us kind of a blank stare. And the eyes often are the magic in a painting like this. In addition to some of the other embellishments we're going to do, the eyes make a world of difference. So what I'm going to do is draw two little partial circles, one in each eyeball. Something like this. Okay. And then on the outside corner of each, I'm going to kind of put a little, a little line going out. And then a little tiny line, a little tiny line right here at the inside corner and kind of a little chicken foot thing on the end of each eye. That is going to make it look like my owl has his eyes closed. And that makes a world of difference. It was something fairly simple, but all of a sudden this owl now has a little bit of life to it. Okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is finish embellishing this up by adding more black marks and white marks to it. I'm going to do a lot of it in this center section and a lot of it across the top of its head just because I can. <laughs> so maybe across the top of its head, I'm going to take my white pen. Um, I'm not sure my white pen works. Let me show you something real quick. Um, these pens require that the tip be pushed in to ink them. So if you just push down on them, the tip will ink. This one might be out of ink. I might have to grab another. Oh, there we go. If you do that, you see those dots it's making? If you do that on your painting, you're going to make a mess on your painting. So if you need to re-ink these tips, do that pressing down on a scratch piece of paper or a paper towel or something like that before you do it on your drawing or your painting. Otherwise, you will end up with bubbly messes all over the place. That is not what we want. So I'm just going to start using basic shapes and simple designs to add some embellishment to this, okay? That pen is about out of ink. So maybe down here on some of these darker colored feathers, I'm gonna start adding some polka dots with the white. Now the white pen is going to show up better on the darker colors than it's going to show up on the lighter colors. But it is fun to use on any of them. So pick a few feathers and start adding polka dots. I am doing polka dots of different sizes. That gives it just a little bit of interest. So you can see those polka dots. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. And just do that here and there on some feathers. We're doing it randomly. There's no real design or plan to it. And then with my black pen, I'm going to go in and randomly maybe make some stripes. So maybe something like that. Okay. 
These kind of designs don't have to be complicated for them to be fun. So far we've just used circles and lines, so that's nothing terribly, terribly earth shattering. I am going to put some dots right in here. I'm going to do one big dot. And you can do it in white or black, just depends on what colors you've used on yours, what you think will look good there. And I'm going to go up from that center dot. I might come back and put a little white dot right in the middle of that just because it adds a little bit of layering to it that gives it just a little bit more interest. Each little bit of these types of embellishments that you do just adds more and more and more personality to the whole thing. Now on mine, my little feather over here is still blank and that's kind of where your heart would be. So I think I'm gonna add a little heart right there on this one. And then I'm gonna come back with my white pen and make a little dot on the heart. So you would just continue that way, adding as much embellishment as you choose to those feathers. This is just overlapping squares. I think that is an interesting look. And again, there's really no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting these. It's just random. And the shapes even aren't all that exact. Okay. Um, you can keep going on those feathers as long as you like to. I'm gonna do another little detail here that is going to add some, oops, went out of focus there, add some um, depth to the feathers. So what I'm gonna do is everywhere these feathers come together, I'm gonna do just some little hash marks starting at the top of where they come together. So just kind of like that. And what that's gonna do is create the illusion of depth, like some of those feathers are sitting in front of the others. And I'm gonna do that same thing all the way down. So you can see I'm not filling it in completely. They're not really long. They're just little hash marks with my pen wherever those feathers are overlapping. And when I zoom back out here in just a second, you'll get the full perspective of what that's going to do. Um, it's just going to create come on, zoom out. a little bit of illusion of depth. You can see how some how those now kind of look like some of them are in front of the others. So it gives it a little bit of depth there. Okay, so you can continue with the feathers in here. You can leave some blank. You can fill them all in. Whatever you choose to do is fine. There really is no right or wrong to that. Um, I do think I'm maybe going to embellish these white dots a little bit more just because I want them to show up a little bit better. So I think all I'm going to do is just add some black ink circles around the bigger ones of my circles. And I'll leave the little dots alone. And those circles aren't real... Um, they're not real exact, they're just you know kind of a quick outline around it. So that just gave them a little bit of pop there. And I think now that I look at it, I'm gonna go back and add some more elements with paint on my wings, which is where using these waterproof pens comes in handy because I can go back and paint over that and not, not smear that paint. So I think what I'm gonna do, I've still got all of my blues and purples and pinks and yellows on my plate. I'm going to add just another layer of maybe the blue and I'm gonna do some big circles on the wings. Just as a, de a design element, there's really not any rhyme or reason to the why of that. So give me just a second here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. 
So I'm just grabbing some of the, the darker blue off my plate and I'm just gonna make circles. I'm not using a ton of paint. I don't want it really, really dark. I still want it to kind of have that pastelish look. So I'm just gonna do a few circles here and there. And you'll notice I have not gone back to my plate to get more paint yet. I'm gonna do a half of one there like it's maybe going off the wing. I'm just using the paint that's on my brush because again, I don't want it terribly dark. And I can always come back to one of these first ones that I did, run my brush through it, and that's actually gonna pick up a little bit of that paint. So if that one was too dark, I can run my brush through it, pick up some of that wet paint and bring it down here and paint another circle with it. And same thing up here, that one's looking a little bit dark. So I'm just gonna run my brush through it, pick up some of that paint and come down here and make a circle down here. Okay, so I'm just giving kind of a polka dot effect on the wings and I'm gonna go over here and do the same thing. So I'm just using some watered down dark blue paint off my plate, the same colors that I was working with before. Now, I didn't paint that one in yet because I, I could tell by the feel of what was coming off my brush, there was a lot of paint on it. And I don't want to have too very much, so I'm just kind of using up the paint that's on my brush. And then I'm gonna come back here, paint that in, and kind of lift off some of that extra paint at the same time. And again, I'm making a couple of them look like they're kind of going off the fold of the wing a little bit. That just helps to add dimension and interest. And from these darker ones, I'm just running my brush through to pick up some of that paint again. And we'll do another one right there. Because I used that waterproof black pen, where I'm bumping up against the black outline over here, it's not smearing the ink, which is nice. Okay. So I got some polka dots on my wings. I think I'm gonna come back and maybe add, um, maybe with white, what looks like stitching in those so that maybe they look like they're kind of patchwork on them, but I need to let them dry for a minute. So I'm gonna zoom this back out and kind of take a look at the overall picture here. Now, this is a good thing to do periodically. Stand back and take a look at it, or if you wanna get a really interesting perspective on what you're doing, take a picture of it with your phone and look at it in that picture. It looks completely different than it does when you're standing looking at it in real life. It's really an interesting perspective shift. So as I'm looking at mine, and I'm looking at it through the camera as well, I think my eyes are not dark enough. I think they need a little bit more definition. So all I'm gonna do is just come back with a little bit thicker pen. And um, this one that I used to begin with was a really fine tip. I have another one that is the Uniball Eye Fine, and it, it says fine, but it's actually a little thicker tip than that other one. So I'm gonna come back with this one. I'm gonna flip this upside down while I do it because my dots are wet and I don't wanna run my hand through that wet paint. So I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm just gonna go over my eyes with this thicker pen. And all that's gonna do is just make that line a little bit thicker and darker. and then all the little sideline marks I made as well. And that's just gonna make that stand out in the eye just a little bit more. There we go, that's better, yeah? All right, so those guys are mostly dry. Now those, those dots that I put on dried fairly quickly because I was not using very much paint. I was just using a real thin wash. And what you can see is that going over the paint that we already had there with that wash of blue paint, it kind of adds a bit of depth to those dots as well because you're seeing a little bit of the purple and blue from the first layers pull up through that second layer because we just used a real light coat of paint. We didn't do it really, really, really thick and heavy. Okay, so I think I am going to come back. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna do it white or am I gonna do it black? I don't know. Maybe we'll do some white and some black. So on these, I am just going to make what look like little stitch marks. Like that. So that it looks like maybe they're little patches that are stitched onto its wings. 
And again, this is part of the whole whimsical aesthetic that I love. It doesn't have to make sense. And then I'm gonna come over here and do the exact same thing. It doesn't have to be realistic. It doesn't even have to be within the realm of possibility. This is strictly based on your imagination and the creativity you wanna to lend to it. Okay, oops, sorry, camera got wiggly. All right, so there we go. I think with that, I'm probably gonna call this one done. You can continue and add as much embellishment to it as you want to. Um, you can do another one again in whatever color you want to. So the idea here is practicing using lighter tones of your colors. So we're using more water, less paint. We're doing dimension by shading in some of these areas where it looks like something should be behind something else. We're letting our creativity run a little bit wild with some doodles on this and making ourselves a cute little owl. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will be back with another paint along probably next month. In the meantime, I do have a watercolor membership group on coffee if anybody's interested. Um, we do paint alongs every month. I do supply reviews, tips and tricks. We kind of take what we do here on this YouTube channel and go more in depth. So if that's something you're interested in, the link for that will be at the end of the video. I would love to have you join us there. There are, um, I think three different membership levels and I've tried to keep them all fairly affordable. Um, my idea is not to break the bank for anybody, but to give you some more in-depth painting resources and lessons. And we're talking about all kinds of things. I think we're doing masking fluid and color mixing and um, something else I can't remember this month. And part of that is a live paint along as well. We do one, one night a month where we paint together on Zoom Live. So if that's something anybody might be interested in, I would love to have you join us. Um, give your owl a try. I would love to hear how you do with it after you've given it a shot. If you have any questions, as always, put those in the comments. Um, and all of the supplies that I use will be listed in the description. So if you have any questions on what paints, what pens, what erasers, things like that, those will all be in the description of the, the video as well. So enjoy, have fun, make some pretty owls, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody.